Hey everyone, for this episode I'm very excited to bring you the long-awaited preamp shootout. Stay tuned. Well there's three things that have definitely been consistent in my life. Three things that I've been chasing. Thrills. So I'm a thrill chaser. A chubby chaser. <laughs> Just kidding. And a tone chaser when it comes to bass playing. Anyways, um, so I mean, we've gone through. I've gone through the usual gamut of uh, trying different basses, different amps, pedals, and everything. Um, and I've pretty much settled on the basses I'm happy with. The amps almost seem secondary because even a lot of the gigs I do, I don't even bring an amp anymore. Um, unless it's a bigger venue, I just put it through the use my pedal board and put it through the monitors. It seems to be fine. Um, however, one thing that I found that's very important to tone shaping is the use of preamps. Um, you know, you can add a bit of dirt, you can add tonal shaping. Uh, certain preamp pedals have tonal characteristics and color that are that are inherent to them, and uh, so you know, always looking for that ultimate tone. So in this episode here, what we're going to do is first of all, I'm going to lay down a loop. Um, with this Fender Precision, it's uh, it's all stock except these are the uh, these are the classic uh, '63, I believe, uh, pickups. I replaced them from the originals, um, and using Elixir strings. Uh, I'm just going to give a quick plug. Um, Elixir strings, they're a bit more expensive, and when they die, they're pretty much done. But man, these things hold tone for a long time. I I highly recommend them. Um, so yeah, the Elixir. I'll put it up over there. Elixir strings. Um, so using the Fender bass straight into the interface with no processing whatsoever, I'm going to lay down a loop and then I'm going to play that loop back uh, raw and then through each individual preamp pedal uh, one at a time, which I'll obviously show on camera. I've got a pretty good variety of pedals here from, from some really older ones to some newer ones on the market from, from Bargain to uh, more expensive premium bands, to uh, well-known and well-renowned, to some new kids on the block. So basically, this, I'm going to break this video into two parts. The first part is I'm going to uh, put each preamp through its paces um, by playing the unfiltered raw bass loop and then turning the pedal on with everything set at, at noon, with the exception of the drive. So everything's set at noon on the pedal. Uh, and with volume unity, so it's the same volume on and off. Um, so you can hear the just the basic characteristics of each particular pedal. The second part of the video, I'm going to try to dial in a tone that, that I would use or, or um, hopefully can use with the preamps. Now some of these you'll see aren't so great in my opinion anyways. So I'm going to try to dial in a tone and do a before and after so you can hear what each pedal can do according to how... Um, according to my tastes, yeah, and this will include adding a bit of drive to some of them. And then the third part is I'm going to rank the pedals. Now again, this is subjective and it's my opinion and your comments are certainly welcome, but I'm going to rank the six pedals that I have uh, from worst to best. By the way, I probably should have mentioned this, but for the best listening experience, um, use headphones. Um, there's a few pops here and there. I apologize for that. Remember, I got a ghetto set up. So anyways, first on the list is the Sonic Cake. Um, this is, a lot of people were ranting and raving about this, A, because of its price and because you've got the multi-effects. Not only you have a preamp, but you got a fuzz and a octaver and a boost comp, which is pretty useless. So that's first.
Secondly, we're going to go with the Sonzap YYZ. Next, you know it. I suppose I should take a sip when I do that. <clears throat> All kidding aside, next we have um, another budget DI uh, preamp, and that's the Kaleen Wine Cellar. This is a pretty popular one, and it's uh, really re reasonably priced, I don't know, around 60 70 bucks. Next we have this old school, one of the favorites uh, by many bass players, the MXR Bass DI. This one got a lot of hype at the time. Uh, it's supposed to emulate the Ampeg fridge, if you will, and it's the Ampeg SCRDI. And last on the list is the, this is the version one of the Sonsamp bass driver DI. This is one of the very first ones that came out um, like early 90s.
Buckle up, let's go. Well, now it's time to unveil the rankings. Um, I took into account the fact that I was trying to get basically, you know, my default tone, the tone I like. I was trying to duplicate um, that for each one of these pedals. Um, so I took that into account. Um, what I didn't take into account was cost or anything like that. Um, I just assumed that they were all on an even playing field and uh, judge it from that. What I also didn't take into account was the most expensive pedal I owned to me is by far the worst pedal and that is the Sansamp YYZ. Um, very unimpressed with this pedal. Getty, I love your bass playing. I think the pedals that you plug, the pedals that you promote are shit. That's number six. Fifth on the list, um, and again, this one, uh, this is a cheap pedal, but it got a lot of reviews because um, of its flexibility, and that is the Asonic Cake. Um, I was not overly impressed with the preamp, although uh, they were, you know, raving about when he cranked them, it sounds like a sounds up, not even close. And the only usable effect on this is the octave, um, and it's got a nasty hum, but still, <laughs> It's still better than the YYZ pedal. So that's number five. Number four, another disappointment because, you know, this brand name is, is iconic and uh, so highly esteemed. Uh, and this pedal was also expensive, but uh, it's the Ampeg SCDRDI. I was not impressed with this at all. It is better with the ultra low and ultra high pushed in, but the scrambler here, absolutely useless it's just dog shit so not impressed with this pedal either that's number four three. number three and this one surprised me because this is a bargain pedal um and it came across quite nice i thought and that's the uh kayleen wine cellar um i was pretty impressed with this overall it's doesn't quite duplicate the sans amp like it like it claims to do but still i was i was pretty happy with this tone so this is a strong number three. And for, uh, and for tone versus value, uh, this would definitely be uh, a highly suggested pick if you want to save some bucks. Two. Now, number two, this was also a surprise because I thought A, nostalgia, and B, just figured that this would be the one. Uh, I figured this would be number one. Uh, but number two is my OG Sans Amp. Um, great tone, really enjoy it and still to this day and use it in my rig more than the other one, which is gonna be changed now. But uh, this, very happy, very consistent tone and you can crank the drive up and it's pretty usable, but not really. There, there's a reason that this pedal is, uh, was used and is still currently used on a lot of albums. So that's number two. And I guess there's not much surprise left what number one is. And again, this was a surprise to me, but to me, the best sounding preamp that I own is the MXR Bass DI. Uh, I was surprised with this, particularly with the color button pushed in. When this when these things pushed in, man, it's it's just something else. It's, it's a hot pedal, um, but I love how you can blend the distortion and the clean. Um, it's just, yeah, for me, this is this is number one. Well, I hope you uh, enjoyed that, learned something, and uh, maybe it helped you make an informed decision of uh, perhaps a route you want to go if you want to go into the preamp world, which I suggest. Um, I, it was a pleasure and a pain to make this video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Here's the Chubby Chasing. Peace out. <laughs>